Dearly beloved, good morning and shalom. Well, well, I'm and indeed blessed to be able to share God's word with you on this very special day of the year that is Reformation Day. So, let's first consider a situation that is very close to our hearts. Dearly beloved, this COVID-19 pandemic has thrown our world into confusion. When by God's grace, this is all over, what should change? Everything. We need a new beginning. We need to change. And we need to adjust and cope with change. Change and change. Well, two little goldfish were having a conversation. One look at the other and say, oh, my, you look tired. Do you know what you need, Goldie? You need a change of air. Likewise, we too need a fresh start, a second chance, and a new beginning. We need to correct and put right the wrong that we have committed to progress with time and to meet the challenges in a changing world, we need to reform. And throughout history, we have seen different forms of reformation movement to promote social reform, political reform, economic reform, and religious reform. The word reform simply means the improvement or amendment of what is wrong, what is corrupt, what is unsatisfactory. Dearly beloved, to bring about reforms and change, we often use the quick fix system, the band-aid. And this quick fix system and method is a non-exact science. This is because each time we try to use the quick fix system, there is a risk that a bigger problem might be created instead. Time is wasted. The right way to solve the problem is skip. Using quick fixing methods may end up leaving us frustrated, both because of loss of time and because it did not work. Dearly beloved, we have to realize that everything happens for a reason. Reality is that often the problems are bigger than those simple words can grasp. The absolute worst place for a quick fix is our spiritual life. Our sin showed our imperfection. And so we say, ah, everything is going to be all right. Or just do this and you'll be fixed. Trying to fix with our own hands. If it is bad enough or in earthly things, that is completely, it is completely disastrous when it comes to spiritual, eternal things. Our fixing method to deal with the problems of sin are not even close to being of help. We tend to say this, I'm not that bad. There are worse people in the world. I don't kill, I don't steal. I pay my bills and I help abandoned dogs. It is all about love. God loves everybody, so everybody will be safe. When you feel down, look into your heart to find peace and purpose. Dearly beloved, this don't really fix anything. But one thing they do, they make the problem, they make the problem of sin worse. So what can we do about it? Martin Luther, the 16th century reformer, faced the same problem. He desperately sought the love and forgiveness of God. And he realized he could not do it. He turned to the word of God in despair. He read Romans 1 verse 17. It reads, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, The just shall live by faith. Through the power of God's Holy Spirit, Martin Luther's heart was open 
to be able to receive the grace of God and change his life forever. He read Romans 3, 28. It says, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Martin Luther said, unless I'm convinced by proof from scriptures or by plain and clear reason and arguments, I can and will not retract. For it is neither safe nor wise to do anything against conscience. Here I stand. I can do no other. God help me. Amen. He went on to say, I am bound by the scriptures and my conscience is captive to the word of God. Martin Luther was convinced that the Bible, God's holy word, has the answer. The problem of sin is so big that there's only one way to fix it. It took God's own son's life to have it fixed permanently. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. He's the Father's long-term plan to fix all of us and to forgive us and to cleanse us of all our sins. And because of that, we have peace, we have forgiveness, we have new life in Christ Jesus. So in Him, we have peace with God. Dearly beloved, today is Reformation Sunday. Celebrating the Reformation is critical and vital because it points us to the wonderful and awesome things that God did to preserve His truth amongst us. On this day, we remember how Martin Luther and other Christians of his time wanted to change the way the church taught people about God's love. At that time, the church was telling people that they had to work their way into heaven. Some people even thought they could pay their way into heaven. Luther knew that this was not what the Bible said. He knew that all of us are sinners and we need to be saved by the one and only Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So Luther reformed, changed the church for the better by telling people what the Bible said. The printing press was invented around that time, so lots of Bible could be printed and people could read for themselves what the Bible said. The great reformers of the 16th century concluded that reform was urgent and necessary in that their days. In pursuing reforms for the church, they rejected two extremes. On the one hand, they rejected those who insisted that the church was essentially sound and needed no fundamental changes. On the other hand, they rejected those who believed that they could create a perfect church in every detail. The church needed fundamental reform, but it would also always need to be reforming itself. The reformers reached these conclusions from their study of the Word of God, from the Bible. The Protestant Reformation was the Proclamation of Justification Doctrine, that is, salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. This is the gospel. This is God's grace as a gift. The Reformation was also an objection against the gradation within the Roman Catholic Church. The century before the Reformation was categorized by public concern with the exploitation of the leaders in the Roman Catholic Church, along with their false doctrine, biblical illiteracy and superstition. At that time, the Catholic Church, they taught unbiblical dogmas like the sale of indulgences, the treasury of merit, purgatory, 
and salvation through good works. Reformation teaching of faith alone points us again, again and again, to Christ Jesus and Him crucified, the true and worthy object of our faith and all our praise. Our scripture text this morning, Romans chapter 3, prompted Martin Luther to say, and I quote, I greatly long to understand Paul's epistle to the Romans, and nothing stood in the way but that one expression, the justice of God, Romans 1.17, because I took it to mean that justice whereby God is just and deal justly in punishing the unjust. My situation was that, although an impeccable monk, I stood before God as a sinner, troubled in conscience, and I had no confidence that my merit would assault me. Therefore, I did not love a just and angry God, but rather hated and murmured against him." Unquote. Dearly beloved, the heart of the Reformation centers on righteousness through faith alone. Righteousness through faith alone. Romans chapter 3, 21 to, 20, 21 to 23, and verse 28 teaches us that salvation is by faith alone. Faith is a receiver. It is essential for us to know that faith is alone because all boasting and works are excluded. The key message is faith has its value only if you put your faith in Christ Jesus. I repeat, faith has its value only if you, only if I, put our faith in Christ Jesus. Our scriptural text, Romans 3, 19 to 28, is what reformers constantly stress, that righteousness comes from God. It is a God type of righteousness. Our problem is not only that we don't have enough righteousness, but that we have the wrong kind. God's righteousness is the divine righteousness that can only be given by God which is needed. We need God's saving grace. Dearly beloved, we need God's saving grace. And the, uh, this saving grace is to prove that God was righteous and just and had the patience over the sins of mankind. You know, God is ever so patient with us, no matter how how much we stray away from him, no matter how we broke his heart by keeping on sinning, God is ever so patient and ever so ready for us to turn around, to turn back to him, confess our sins and get right and be right with him. The saving faith which looks to and trusts in Christ Jesus alone was God earned salvation for us. 100% of the way by faith alone in Christ Jesus without any merits in us. This God-given saving grace is about knowledge, assent, and trust. Faith is neither opposed to knowledge or is burying our heads in the sand of ignorance. Faith has nothing to fear from knowledge. Dearly beloved, Reformation teaching of faith alone points us again and again to Christ Jesus, Christ alone, and Christ crucified, the true and worthy objects of our faith and all our praise. This is the heart of Reformation and the central focus of the Word of God. Indeed, this is the gospel. This is God's grace as a gift. Indeed, salvation comes through grace. 
and not our good works. Our quick fixes to spiritual matters simply doesn't hold up. And we can't work to earn salvation and justification. For we are justified to make right acceptable to God through His gracious gift of salvation, which has nothing to do really with our good works. A writer once said, he came up with this mathematical equation for salvation. He says, God's grace plus my good works equals salvation. That is not the case. But rather, it's God's grace plus zero. Nothing from us. Because we are indeed all sinners. Equals to salvation. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Dearly beloved, by faith alone, let us always remember we are saved by God's grace through faith. God declares us to be righteous in His sight. The justification Christ offered free us from the penalty of sin and will keep us free from that justification. Someone once said that justification means simply just as if I did never sit. Praise and thank God for He saved us. He loved us and we are saved by faith. By faith alone. Author J.I. Parker has this exhortation for us. I quote, Justification is truly dramatic transition from the status of a condemned criminal awaiting a terrible sentence to that of an heir awaiting a fabulous inheritance. Praise and thank God. So on this day that we remember, the 16th century Reformation, may the Word of God refresh us, reform us, renew us, and may we be a church that is reformed and renewed by the Word of God and by God's grace. Dearly beloved, are you justified by God's grace through the work of Christ Jesus? which you have received by faith. Salvation is by grace and through faith alone. This is the heart of the Reformation. In the history of Christianity, we learned that the church is always being reformed according to the Word of God. Dearly beloved, we are always being reformed according to the Word of God by scripture only. So when we listen to the scripture, allows it to speak to us and correct our errors and abuses. For the word of God is a lamb to our feet and a light to our path. We may fall and we do fall. We forget God's word. But God restores. I like this quote. We may fall and we do fall. We forget God's word. But God restores. God restores us. We are to go forward to the past with Christ Jesus by faith alone. Going forward to the past? Well, let us always uphold the word of God as the eternal truth. Even though the word of God in the printed form the Word of God, in the form that we can read, is, well, years ago. But God's Word always stands. The Bible stands. All else will fall. So let's remember that we are saved by grace just because God loves us. It's nothing that we can bring about it. It's simply a wonderful gift. It is like water that comes from the water station to our house. It is the water that quenches 
your turf, my turf, but you need the pipes to bring it to you. The pipes can't erase your turf, but they bring what erases it. The Protestant Reformation wasn't about education or, so, or sociological or cultural reformation. The Reformation in 1517 was simply about returning to the freedom given to us through the gospel. And that is what it is. That is what it is still about today. So dearly beloved, we as individual Christians and the church are always in need of reform. Our hearts need constant reformation in the sense that we need constant contact with the Word of God. That is to say that what we need is the Word of God. That is what it needs. Reformation, not quick fixes. It is a lasting solution, not an improvised attempt. As we fix our eyes, on the cross, as we fix our eyes on Christ who died on the cross, was crucified for us on the cross, we know by faith what can really bring us peace, true peace. Even at times like this, even during times of COVID, even during times when the economic situation is not good. Even in times when people are retrenched, even in times when people lose their loved ones to COVID. Yes, God will give us true peace and peace that cannot be taken away. So let us be encouraged by God's word. Let us always, daily, hourly, every moment, every second be renewed and reformed by God's word that yes, Lord, is indeed your word that is precious to me. And it is on the promises of God's word. It is holding on to God's word. Holding on to faith alone, Christ alone, scripture alone, grace alone. And of course, we give full glory to God. And dearly beloved, it's a question for us to ponder, to reflect upon, that is, have we been reformed in Christ? Do we stand firm on God's word and let God speak to us today to remake and to remold us, to reform us in Christ's image? Well, may the Lord help us. May the Lord help us not only to know the answer, may the Lord help us to make a commitment and say, Dear Lord, I am but a sinner, saved by your grace, to faith alone. Forgive me, O Lord. I may slide, I may fall, and I do fall. But Lord, restore me, restore me, renew in me a heart that will edify you till Christ Jesus comes. The message of Reformation it's not a message that began with Martin Luther, but with Jesus Christ, the first true reformer. This reformation is something that is to be continued today, both in the church and in our hearts, and dearly beloved, in your hearts. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your many wonderful blessings upon us, especially for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who through his life, death and resurrection here on this earth, has revealed to us the nature of your love, the forgiveness of our sins, and the assurance of life eternal in your heavenly kingdom. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, increase in us an appreciation for your redeeming grace, and the desire to walk humbly in relationship with you as disciples of Christ Jesus. Help us, Lord, to stand firm on your holy word. 
be reformed in Christ Jesus and to glorify and edify your holy name. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen.